Well, hey there, this is Jerry, and I'm getting started on another episode of What's Broke Today. And today, I've got, I got two Toro 22-inch walk-behind mowers that, um, amazingly enough, have exactly the same problem. So let me get ready, and we'll take a look. Okay, like I said, both these Toros came from the same guy. This one has a uh, 7.25 uh, Briggs and Stratton on it, and the other one has, uh, I don't know what, a 6.75 Kohler. And since they both, well, there's a, they don't put a screw in that hole on this one. Um, and you may guess where I'm going with this since they're from the same guy and they had the same problem. Could he have done the same thing to both of them? And I'm actually probably 99% positive that he's got water in his uh, gas can. And of course, you ask someone, you know, you sure you don't got water in your gas can? Oh, no, no. It, there's no water in it. <laughs> well, when I pull this bowl off, let's see what comes out. And it does smell like gas, but what you probably couldn't see was when I first took loosened it up, this bowl nut, um, when there's water in the gas, Oh shoot, somebody said this apart. Um, it needs a new seal. And this, which I don't know if you can see, but this has dirt and water down in there. Um, I'll have to go get my glass jar, pour that in it. Because it's sitting in that bowl, it's hard to see. But... I almost bet I, I hope I got one of these but yeah but that's what it is is a combination of dirt and water so um yeah let me go get my glass jar and I'll be back all right so I get my glass jar and it's not perfectly clean, but we'll pour what I got in there and see. Yeah, I'm not sure it'd show up in the camera because the... Yeah, it's got just a little pocket of water in the bottom, so... Let's come to the carburetor and... Let's pull the line off. I'll put it down in the jar. I'll take my vice grips off. And Cause see, we've had a lot of rain around here. The temperature changes a lot. We've had a lot of humidity and Back up on there, because at the tail end, last few seconds, that looked like it was running clean. So, yeah, I don't know that you'll be able to see that, but right down here in the very bottom where it's a little bit browner is the... Uh, is where the water's at. So, yeah, not cool. And then I'm gonna take a picture of this for him. That another thing I noticed, I went to get a new gasket 
for the air cleaner where housing where it bolts up to the motor because I was missing a chunk I went to clean that chunk off of the uh, uh, air cleaner housing and wasn't nothing to clean off because it wasn't there so whoever might have worked on this last time that put this back in and I think this is just a plain old o-ring out of one of those o-ring kits from the auto parts store because it's round and this o-ring for this should be square so I'll make sure I got all that old off and I've got the correct um, bowl gasket. I took and sprayed out the main jet with brake clean. And then I always, always take this and try and put it up on the carburetor and on the, the ledge where it goes. And feel around and make sure it's in the right spot. And then oh, I set the I washed out the bowl. Let me put the bowl back up there on the gasket and then the nut back in. Because if you don't have a good gasket here or a good gasket on the bowl, that's probably where the dirt came from. Doesn't do anything about the gas getting in there, but I'll come back here and crimp that, and then I'm gonna come in here and cut the fuel line in half. And I'm gonna install a wire mesh screen type fuel filter. I cut a little bit of hose removed so it's not too long. And cut something that's about the thickness of your filter. And these are like a Briggs and Stratton 394358S. And you got red ones and white ones. And the only real difference between the two is uh, one of them's a finer micron or finer wire mesh screen. And I can't remember which is which. Um, I use them both. Main thing is I use them any place where I don't have a fuel pump where I got to rely on gas to flow freely because many times I find if you put one on that has a paper element in it and especially if you got uh, fuel with ethanol in it um, it doesn't flow real well um, by gravity feed. Now let's just pull it up here. Up. All right, we're gonna just roll this one out of the way. Let's roll this one up. And, um, pop air cleaner off. I don't really like these because these tabs, you got to bend them up because, I don't know, they just don't hold real good. And then I don't have to take this air cleaner housing off, but I do just because it's easier to see. And also, well, this, I'm looking at this one. Okay, our gasket's still there. Um... I just want to make sure that that other one doesn't start overflowing with gas because always worry when you've had um, uh, you know the water and that kind of that much dirt in is there a chance that maybe it could have got that in the needle valve and float for the float it wasn't quite as much there's a few because you know the the water makes, you know, it ends up being droplets in the uh, fuel. Let's pull that off. And... Well, I don't know what to make of that. 
I mean, that looks like uh, graphite. I bet you sometime or another this one's had um, water in the bowl and it for sure. And then we just clean the bowl. Because whatever that is, it doesn't wipe out. And that gas flows okay. Yeah, well, let me go to dispose of this fuel and um, we'll come back and drain some out of this. I went ahead and pulled that fuel line loose and let's take our vice grips off. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I'm going to put one of those uh, fuel filters in line. Take my brake clean. And This one was a lot more uneventful than the other one, for sure. But, let me see if I can get this one put back together, and then we'll get around and try and start them both. here and clip clip a little and get a piece of hose out of the way and I don't know if it matters what way these fuel filters go on since it's I mean it's in essence just a a wire screen but there's that Right, the only thing else I got left to go get is, um, well, I might have a bungee cord. I, um, I'm going to tie the, you know, those safety strap bales down um, just so I can start them up and leave them running. Uh, you know, the funny thing is about this. They may still not run because I don't think this is straight gas. You ever, I mean, if you've ever smelled gas, I'm wondering if he, if he bought E85 fuel and tried to run it in his lawnmower because that does not smell like gasoline. Um, Man, I um, I wish I. They make a test kit so you can test how much ethanol's in fuel. I might need to buy one of those because, like I say, I, that does not smell like gasoline. All right, so what we're gonna do is I got a bungee cord holding the handle down on this one. I use a rope over here. Um, I'm just gonna start them up and let them run, and uh, while I do some other stuff. back. Toro ran not 
even two minutes and started running bad as the choke was opened up or opening up but then as a thermostatically controlled choke I think I'll yank the carburetor off a bit where I can look at it better I went ahead and took the carburetor on the Toro apart and this is the air bleed tube and I I don't even know what to make of that. It feels like sand. And that was in that was in that along with being in the uh, uh, main jet. So I'm gonna clean these up because yeah, the hole in the main jet, man, you can't hardly see through it. So which, yeah, I doubt you can through the camera, but it's not not flowing much. So I got my main jet put back in and we'll reassemble this carburetor because I don't I don't really have a good answer for what that was. I mean I've seen all kinds of stuff in carburetors. But that um I'll definitely say what I found in this one was a first. I'm just trying to make sure I got that gasket or o-ring down in its groove and then we can you know yeah because that was all up in that I don't know air bleed assembly and yeah I don't know because <laughs> I've seen a lot of things and that isn't one thing I've ever seen before but so we'll get this ready and then the goo Got to take the choke off this one to totally remove the carburetor, but you get it off, and then when you go back together, just hook it on the carburetor, and you can set it back on the uh, exhaust and get those two nuts started. That that's a this has a thermostatically controlled uh, choke, so as um, as the engine warms up and the muffler gets hot, it blows air out of the top of the muffler on the back side of this coil, which will and then in turn pull the choke open. Another common thing we see on these is. Um, these little pins here on this stainless steel arm go through and there's little, I mean tiny E-clips that um, hold those on and uh, it's one of these that's, they'll say if they don't keep it inside, uh, they're steel, they're tiny and they rust and they will um, break and fall off and then if those pins come out of either end um, when the when this starts and the governor kicks in um, I'm a camera's gonna be at a goofy angle but you'll see the choke valve down in there when the governor kicks in it will pull that up there but if you watch down in there when the governor comes it actually will open the choke and that's kind of like a choke pull off kind of device and the Briggs and Stratton um, it ran for a good 20 minutes maybe better because I uh, I forgot to start the clock and then I was doing other things and then realized uh, it was still running after I'd looked up parts and did a bunch of other things so I'm gonna call it good and I will almost bet when I get this all back together it's gonna run like a top 
and these Toros here I mean, with these Kohler motors are about one of the easiest mowers to work on. Pull that tight like that and then let's see what it does. Well, see, I got everything but a chainsaw fix that got the two Toros running good. And, of course, I did his um, oil change, blade sharpening, and stuff on it, and checking and some adjustments. I was right standard this morning. Changed the oil, sharpened the blades, and uh, I guess greased the uh, Cub Cadet Zero turn. And now with his other two Toros going, um, he should be set for a day or two. But hey, I appreciate you watching. Uh, we always like those thumbs up for the likes. Uh, always love those comments. And a uh, big shout out to everybody that's subscribed because I'm nearing that 500 subscriber barrier and uh, making a guy feel pretty good. So uh, I appreciate all those subscribers out there. And uh like I say, anybody that's not a subscriber, better join on in because no telling what else you'll see on What's Broke Today. Thank you.